the brand new Ford Think City Compact Sedan. It's a breath of fresh air because it's 100% electric. Welcome to Belated Tech Musings. This is the third installment in a series of episodes on vintage and innovative cars and trucks. After you view this episode, be sure to check out episode 16 on the Pontiac Fiero and episode 18A on the Tesla Cybertruck. Late in 2019, Ford revealed the all-electric 2021 Mustang Mach-E, the company's first mass production electric car designed to compete with the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. Ford is using the Mustang nameplate to highlight the Mach-E's beefy performance specs, albeit specs that are common to most modern electric cars, and to evoke the necessary brand nostalgia to jumpstart acceptance of the Mach-E in the marketplace and to generate excitement about Ford's entrance into the electric car business. Consumers may be surprised to learn, however, that the Mach-E is actually Ford's fourth attempt to design, build, and market electric cars since the company's founding. Ford's first attempt was a joint venture with Thomas Edison and General Electric in 1914 to develop an affordable electric car analog to the gasoline-powered Model T. But duty cycle problems with the Edison-led acid batteries and introduction of electric start gas cars put an end to the $1.5 million program, with 50 years passing before Ford tried electric vehicles again. In 1966, Ford responded to a surge in interest by the public in cleaner air by taking another shot at a fully electric car. The result was the Ford Commuta. Using sodium sulfur batteries rather than lead acid, the Commuta featured a 40 mile range and a 35 mile per hour top speed. Marketing a midget car with range and speed limitations in the US was ludicrous, so the vehicle was only manufactured in the UK for the European market, where small cars were the norm. But low consumer interest even in the UK meant that the car served as little more than a media curiosity, and production quickly ended. This brings us to Ford's third attempt at an electric car, and the subject of this episode. That car was the Think City, a Norwegian import that was acquired by Ford in order to comply with California low emission vehicle regulations in the late 1990s. Ford spent $100 million on the Think City and its derivative technology, rather than develop its own technology, as its view was that electric cars were still absurd in the world of cheap US gasoline prices and ever more efficient internal combustion cars. Tesla's founding was still five years away and to Ford, $100 million is a cheap price to pay to deal with the fanatics in the California legislature. The end of production of the Think City in 2002 meant that Ford would go almost another two decades without a viable electric car. After a quick look at some of the BTM channel's other episodes, let's examine the Think City and see how it has affected Ford's thinking on the design of the Mach-E. <laughs> In the 1990s, the state of California, which had always been a burr under the saddle for large vehicle manufacturers, owing to horrific smog conditions in the southern part of the state, adopted zero emission vehicle regulations that required manufacturers producing more than 35,000 vehicles a year to ensure that 2% of the total be electric. Each manufacturer dealt with this challenge in different ways. For example, General Motors developed the EV1 electric car, and Chrysler developed the Epic minivan. 
Ford, which as previously mentioned, had made a significant research effort on electric vehicles in the 1960s, decided that current battery technology still didn't justify any significant investment in electric vehicles. So instead, they looked to buy a solution to the ZEV90 requirement. That solution turned out to be the Think Company in Norway, which had already demonstrated a prototype electric compact vehicle in the mid-1990s. So in 1998, Ford spent about $20 million buying out Think's founders, and then another $100 million bolstering Think's battery technology and readying a vehicle capable of meeting U.S. federal and California regulations. Ford needed to sell about 5,000 Think City cars between 1998 and 2003 in order to satisfy the ZEV90 mandate. So in late 1999, the executives at Ford crossed their fingers and put the Think City into production. The Think City was a two-seat coupe hatchback, smaller than most available compact cars. Despite its diminutive size, the city only managed 53 miles of total range on a single charge, although it could hit the 55 miles per hour speed limit that was federally imposed since the oil embargoes of the 1970s. Think cities were powered by gelled electrolyte, silica sulfur, lead acid batteries. Ford knew that with such a limited range, its appeal to California consumers lessened. So the company banked on marketing it to urban customers and dangled a cheap 34 month, $199 per month lease to reel those customers in. Despite leasing the vehicles at a loss, Ford couldn't even give away the Think City. General Motors had thrown in the towel on the GM EV1, a vastly superior car, after only selling a little over 1,100 units between 1996 and 2000. Ford gave up on the Think City in 2003 after four years of anemic sales, a little less than 1,000 units. It seemed that in spite of a significant amount of bloviating by California politicians and the California Air Resources Board, California consumers weren't ready to give up their internal combustion engine cars for inferior replacements. Ford suspended sales and recalled the Think City with the intention of crushing them all like GM did three years earlier with the EV1. But a public outcry similar to that experienced by GM with their disposal plan led Ford to make the problem go away by shipping all the cars back to Norway for refurbishment and resale in Europe. Ford sold its holdings in Think, and the Norwegian company soldiered on for another eight years before filing its final bankruptcy papers in 2011. The city's range was doubled during that period, and the internal and external trim modernized, but the advent of high-range electric vehicles like that from Tesla doomed the company, as consumers realized they no longer had to buy a souped-up go-kart to enjoy the advantages of the electric vehicle. The Think City experience merely reinforced Ford's view that electric vehicles were still a pipe dream in a world where petroleum-based vehicles were significantly cheaper and more convenient to own and drive. This view was further hardened by the financial crisis of 2007 to 2009 and the teething problems of Tesla in producing and selling its Roadster between 2008 and 2012, a model that failed to ship more than 2,300 total units, barely twice the total of the failed Think City. Tesla labored on, however, and capitalized on maturing technology in lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt batteries to develop the Model S, which shipped not in the hundreds, but in the tens of thousands. The Model S was followed by the Model 3 in 2017, which began to ship in the hundreds of thousands. It was at this point that Ford knew it was in trouble. Taking its cue from Tesla's work on the Model X, a retooled variant of the technologies used in the Model S, Ford began a crash program to fully develop its own SUV, EV, the same year that the Model 3 started shipping. Eventually called the Mach-E, the design by committee prototype was revealed in late 2019 with a promised ship date in late 2020 for the 2021 model year. Early release specs call for the Mach-E to support a 210 to 300 mile range, depending on the drivetrain, about five to six times the range of the Think City, and comparable to the upcoming Tesla Model Y. Tesla fully expects the Model Y to outsell its models S, X, and 3 combined, presenting a real challenge to Ford's ambitions in the car and SUV markets. Will the Mach-E overcome the legacy of the Commuta and the Think City? There is some indication that Ford is hedging its bets by pouring money into EV versions of its commercial and pickup trucks, 
as Mustang enthusiasts are scratching their heads of the prospect of jumping from fuel injectors and turbochargers to electromotive drivetrains. But Ford hasn't been in business for over 100 years for nothing, so we're betting the company will give the market a run for its money. I hope you enjoyed this episode on the Ford Think City, the Mustang Mach-E, and Ford's history in electric cars. If so, click that like button. Let us know that you want more of these types of episodes by clicking the subscribe button. Activating the bell icon will also make sure you receive notifications of new episodes. Links to material related to this video, the BTM channel, episodes 16 and 18A, and select other content can be found below. Save the link to our Instagram account so you can get early updates to our channel. We also announce all new episodes on Twitter, so be sure to follow our account there. Thanks for watching.